Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Environmental Social Justice. Today, I have my good friend Joel Vendette. It is just us today. And if you read the announcement, we're talking about carbon sequestration or any kind of burying of material in the ground. I thought it was an important topic because lately I've seen a few articles about burying CO2 or other gases in old salt domes or old oil caverns that have been drilled out. So um, the reason I bring this up is historically and for centuries, we have buried things from household waste and garbage, which wasn't that bad. It was just simple stuff, food, materials. And then as we developed and as society moved on, we started burying hazardous waste because we thought, hey, we'll just bury it in the ground. You know, it'll go away. We'll never see it again. Not a problem. This proved to be a problem with all of our contaminated sites that we have, the establishment of Superfund sites by the EPA. So um, my whole question is, and no, I'm not an expert in this. I'm just a geologist. And, you know, Joel is here as the impartial, unbiased opinion. But should we be uh, burying gases in the ground for storage? Joel, what do you think? I don't even know how you do that. I don't understand that. You pump it. You pump it in. So it just kind of goes in like empty, like almost like silos below the ground, and then they're just full of gas. That just sounds like a fire hazard waiting to happen. So I read a few, I'm glad you mentioned that because I read a few papers. So but it's basically these old salt derms that, you know, the salt, you know, salt, and not just sodium chloride, but other precipitates. It just kind of pushes through the uh, stratigraphy and domes up and the stratigraphy on top holds it in. And we harvest that out. We suck it out, mine it out. And then it's empty. It's just an empty chamber and it's said that they're impermeable so other than the hole we popped in the top to get the stuff out it's apparently sealed now as a geologist 20 years working in risk management things can go wrong things do go wrong and in the past when we would bury contaminated materials and hazmat or hazardous materials it would leak and that's why we had bad things happen go ahead but what were those buried in so it was a so everything from like in New Jersey marshes really bad idea because it's a wet environment. But I mean, no, but I mean, like, what were they contained in? Like, were these, um, like, the hazmat drums? went everything from drums, like fifty-five gallon drums that people would just drop off, right? Or um, with Love Canal, which is um, in New York State, that right. was the first Superfund site. They had so Love Canal was originally built to be the Venice of the, of America. They built these large canals. They lined them with right. impermeable material. And they went bankrupt. So another company come in, Hooker Chemical Company, like, hey, we've got these pre-dug holes. This is awesome. Let's throw all of our waste in there. But mind you, these were lined. And they buried them and they lined it again and it was secured. Now that leaked and seeped, not because it cracked open, but simply because the municipality wanted to run some more sewer lines and utility lines and popped holes right through it. And so would those still be huh? so would those still be impermeable had people not gone in and messed with it don't know i mean everything over time will crack so this was clay i believe it was clay lined and even though it's a really you know i'm not talking it's going to crack and break in 20 years i'm talking 100 years right and um stringfellow mines which um ontario california um that i believe was buried in a mountainside and the geologists involved said, hey, you know, this is impermeable material. You can go ahead and bury your waste in there and it'll be fine. And that leaked. Was mean, again, clay again? Like, Pardon me? Was that clay again? No, this was just hard, you know, sedimentary rock. So sandstone, mudstone kind of right. in between. I don't know if they lined it. Um, I can't I couldn't tell you that, honestly, because basically what I'm comparing this to is like your sewer line, because sewer lines were originally done in clay, which yes. is a very good material to use for that. That being said, when the ground shifts, that's when you start having the problems and the settling over time. So we're replacing those now with PVC, which has more of the give and the flux. So that way they don't, or they can be lined, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Nothing like talking about a sewer line first thing in the morning. But, you know, it, <laughs> but those are the new products. So I'm wondering, like, when they say impermeable, is it impermeable up to the point that people don't mess with it? So the second someone messes with it, Right. it's going to break i mean we know this seismic activity um storms things like that now with um clay it will eventually degrade over time it's a very sure. strong material but eventually it will crumble um pvc obviously man-made material synthetic right. will last forever unless drilled through punched through 
So that's now, what I'm wondering is if are these being done with if they're talking about premium into an impermeable material, are they going into something like a PVC? Or are they going into something that is designed to last forever? Or is it, we don't know. So personally, I don't know okay. what I have read. Cause I've read a bunch of articles on this and um, basically they're just taking these old salt caverns, these old petroleum caverns. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you would get in there to line them because basically it's, it's an oil well or a salt well. You can't really just drop guy in there and hose it down. You know, it doesn't work that way. So they would, they're relying on what is deemed impermeable in its natural state. Oh, okay. See now that's different. <laughs> so I'm wondering, you know, is this the, really the best idea? And I mean, this was not me thinking in a vacuum. Um, I remember Farouk Abbas, we had him a, um, like a year ago. So Farouk is a, is a NASA scientist, geologist, very bright man. Um, he has a Wikipedia page. I highly recommend checking him out. He's awesome. But I called Farouk and I'm like, am I wrong in thinking that storing gases under pressure is a bad idea? And he said, absolutely not. This is a terrible idea. And what he brought up, I had not thought about. Two things. Um, potential for explosion and fire because chemicals can mix with other chemicals that are already underground. And I actually did some research where um, hydrogen, about. pardon me? That was my initial concern is because mixing with stuff not even mixing stuff just the pressure of putting any sort of a gas or a chemical under that yes. creates danger yeah when uh, the high pressure you're gonna you know be expanding again you're taking something with liquid like salt and petroleum which does have its own pressures but now you're kind of changing your viscosity you're, you're changing your chemistry you're changing you know the materials from liquids to gases and or even solids or semi-molten. And now you're completely changing the environment where it once was stable, will it maintain its stability? That I don't know. And I God, I wish we had an expert because I, I threw this on Joel last minute because I really want to talk about it. So I'm really sorry to, to do this to Joel, but um, yes. what, go ahead. No, you're not. <laughs> a little bit, I feel a little bad, a little bit. Yes. Um, but no, I mean, seriously with this, um, the explosion thing is possible, but when I was reading up on chemistry, um, hydrogen can change to CH4 or H2S, hydrogen sulfide or sulfuric acid. Um, these are concerns, to say the least. Um, and so you have the chemistry thing, you have the leaking thing, you have the explosion thing, but everyone loves doing this. And people are actually moving forward in many industries of burying their gases in these caverns. But what would be the alternative? Creating silos, I guess, building. See, that's that's the whole thing is, I don't know what the alternative could be other than creating large storage tanks and farms again and Which, having it be above ground. And that but, probably creates an even bigger concern. It is. Yeah. And I was just, yeah, the, the, now that that blows up, you got a big problem. Yep. And when they say that if it's underground, it's less of a problem but I think there's a, a whole community in Pennsylvania that would disagree with that because there was a coal fire that started in Pennsylvania, I think in the 60s, and it's still burning to this day. They can't stop it. Okay, I think you're talking about two different things though. Oh yeah, I'm talking about a whole bunch of things, I know that. <laughs> you know, and I, but there, you're, I mean, you're also talking about something that's going to be a self-contained, basically bottle with a cork in it, well, just layman's yeah. terms over here, you know versus an open coal mine where you've got an underground coal mine it wasn't like an open thing no, no, no. But, i mean i think people know coal mines go below ground that's the way they were right. um but so i mean i think you're talking but that's you know so if that was more of a self-contained thing where you had the cork in it you know i mean chances are there's not going to be the oxygen to get to the fire it's going to eventually go out but this is an open coal mine where people are already below ground coal mine blah 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 but it's going so you've got those are two drastically different things they, they're not drastically. They're, they, yeah, they have well, some in fire terms, I think you're talking about two different things, you know. Because I also think if you've got like the combustible gas, eventually that will go, if it does, God, I even hate even mentioning this, but if it does go boom, eventually that gas will burn up. And so the it fire. It will burn up, yes. Yeah, it's a versus, finite source. Versus the coal mine, it's going to it keep going. It just keeps going and burning, yeah. Yeah. But so uh, yeah, I guess, I mean, just from, from your terms, because you, you are coming up with well thought out ideas that I, you know, I've already obviously done my research and read things, so I'm biased completely. What would be 
a reasonable alternative to burying it in your mind? Just tank farms or okay, underwater? I mean, some people are even talking about storing things in the ocean. I'm like, that's not the smartest idea. <laughs> We've already ruined our ocean. So, I mean, what's a little bit more? Um, it's it's just I'm surprised that there's not finding, somebody's not trying to find some way to repurpose this. Repurpose the old um, caverns? No, the, the gases. Why can't they just find some way to reuse them into something else? Oh, they're trying. Well, that's the whole thing is we've generated a lot. We need to store it properly. And but it's, I mean, it's a way to turn this into like energy or to, you know. Well, it, it will be stored and used for energy as needed. Okay. So I guess. Thing. But that's what I mean. It's like, so I mean, at least there, that way is being talked about stored for a, for a future use versus just, let's just put it at the bottom of the ocean. You know, you, you just struck on something that made a lot of sense. It's going to be constantly in use. So this isn't something difference. that's going to be stored and forgotten about and put right. away for a hundred years. This yeah, is something so constantly. Hmm? You're not trying to create just like a toxic dumping site where it's like we put the pollutants in a metal barrel, which we know was not going to last. And we mm -hmm. dump that below the ground, let the, wait that for it to leak. And then just go, oh my God, we had no idea this was going to happen. You know, so I think we're talking about, we are actually talking about, this is actually a very drastically different thing. So we're actually talking about storing it below ground, put a cork on it until we need to get in there and pull it out and then use it for something else. So this is literally just a holding spot versus- It's a holding tank. That's okay. So this is where now we're starting to get- Now, yeah. See, again, I'm, I'm not an expert in this. I just read a couple articles, but I, I immediately got like the, the red flags waving and I'm like, I want to talk about this. And I wish, you know, I wish we could, you know, if Farouk were available just to grab yeah. him or- if there's anyone out there who's an expert in this, God, I really would love to talk to you guys about it because there's so much. Pardon me? I think we're starting to get closer to the to the reality of what we're looking at here, which is not dumping it, hiding it away, locking it away like, you know, the relative nobody wants to talk to. But actually, you know, we're, we're going to put this aside knowing that eventually we're going to tap back into it, pull it out, replenish it, and it's going to become like a secular thing. That's completely different than just saying we're storing it here forever. That is a very good point. And uh, I'll be honest, I had I had so much fear and anxiety about storing something and having it leak and having it like contaminate a neighborhood or blow up. I never thought about the fact, yeah, it's going to be in continuous use, constantly mixing, constantly changing, constantly yeah. updating. So that's so a very, very, that's a very, point. very different. So I think I understand Feruza's, Feruza, 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 his concern about it being stored for a long period of time. But I think if we look at the long-term goal, which is we're going to store it until we need it, Kind of like we do with it, like you're using the silo reference. I think that's completely different than what people were doing with toxic dumps, which is uh, hide it, you know. That that's very, what I was, so that's so, why I wanted to talk to you about this. I wanted to get your opinion because I was so I, I went down my rabbit hole of, of papers and I was just getting creep. I was getting creeped out. <laughs> but of course, but I think it's like when you start getting to just the surface level, saying, "Oh shit, this is bad." We're going to just, we're just storing it. But then it's like, mm, hold on, let's go another level deeper. What are we actually doing? What's the, what's the end game? You know, yeah. I think that's when it starts making a little bit more sense, you know, and I would like to think that people have researched this to say it's not, per, you know. Oh, they've been doing it for a few decades, um, yeah. primarily for methane, um, natural gas. Okay. And those, you know, we've had issues in the past with methane gas releases or natural gas releases. Um, I don't know the success rate of salt domes, though, because I'm not sure what the others were being stored in. Hmm. Well, we're going to find out. Yeah, we're going to find I mean, again, I just this is just something that crossed my my field of vision only recently. And I was like, oh, my God. So you know what I'm sure <laughs> and then you we have the who's the voice of reason. <laughs> I'm sure you can go and find uh, go on Twitter and find a bunch of people who are experts. And just, you know, and that's the thing. That's that's the stuff I have to kind of sift through. And so I was reading articles from 1993 okay. and then one from 2022. So trying to get this full range of, you know, again, the 93 were like, this is awesome. This is great. All paid for by the energy corporations. And then the, you know, May, 2022, I think was the most recent article was saying how awful and dangerous it is for explosion and fire done by a nature group. So two different interests, two different groups, they're going to have different, we need that middle. <laughs> It's like everything in the world right now. Everything is one extreme or the other. We have to find the middle ground, which that's where the truth normally lies. It, it does. And I mean, maybe if there's, may, yeah, maybe with the storage things, they're constantly mixing and constantly being replenished and updated. 
and maybe they are properly sealed. Maybe they do spray something in there. I don't know. I mean, for all we know, they could be lining these things like a giant balloon. See, and I mean, dead serious here, here right now. Where you That's do, actually a good idea. Like you do it with a sewer line. I'm going to come back to that. You can put a hose in there, you inflate it, and it takes over the whole thing so that we don't yeah. have to take out your entire sewer line. So you could actually do this with something like that. And that could actually be an option. That's brilliant. I know. You, you I should know. be an engineer. Nobody wants that. I don't want to do it <laughs> like that. Wait, you don't want to work on sewer lines? No. Not really. I do enough of that in my day in my normal job. I don't need more. Ow. Damn. Yeah. yeah. So, so okay, yeah. So you've convinced me. I walked into this conversation completely no, 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 no. And now I'm like, you know, I get it. This is why I like having your opinions. You think very broadly. Yeah, you have to. But I mean it's not, but we don't know. And we also don't know. So to kind of do like the doom and gloom, this is horrific, blah, 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 blah. We have no freaking idea. We don't see the silo tanks. We're not, or the tanks, whatever you want to call them. We're not in them. We don't know what the pl what the plans are, and I'm sure there's going to be some sort of regulations as far as what requirements there will be to make sure that these are safe and secure to do this. You know, so yeah. That we can keep it from either side completely. Well, you you convinced me to uh, keep an open mind because again, I always again twenty years of risk management. You always think something will go wrong. What's it going to be this yes. time? But well, that's also human nature. You plan for the worst and you hope to be happy at the end. That yeah, that's actually very true. So um on that, that's that's pretty much all I had to say about um the CO2 and the and the salt domes and the and the oil. Did you want to chat real quick about our impending water issues in California that were just announced well, today? They're not impending. They are in effect today. They're in effect today. So That's if you are in Southern, I'm not going to get over to the regulations because they're going to vary from city to city and county to county. So I will say if you live in Southern California, go online immediately and find out what your new water restrictions are. Because some people are being down to basically, I think it's nine minutes twice a week. Yep. That's eight minutes three. actually. Eight minutes. You know, so this is the beginning of the new round of water restrictions and they're going to be getting a lot, potentially a lot more severe. Oh, yes. And the fines are hefty. The fines the are is, then if this doesn't do much and we have to go then one of the like down the road will be the phases where if you have a pool you're not filling it so do these oh, things yeah. now if you want to stay cool in the summer there or you just go go on out and do native plants how about that native plants are awesome big fan um so yeah actually that's a good segue to next week we were talking to um gil garcetti next week we're for wellspring hope and uh we'll be talking a lot about water and water usage and cons conservation and, you know, that's kind of the question that I have, though, is that, like, I mean, I think we live in Southern California, and I think, you know, we're not in the Midwest, we're not in certain parts of the country where you're used to, like, these large, lush lawns. Like, we actually live in a desert, so I don't understand why we have to have, I get grass, I understand the purpose of it, don't get, don't send me emails about that. But it's just a matter of, like, why don't we understand we are in a desert? We always have been in a desert, you know, so why do we And there are very drought-tolerant grasses out there, actually. Uh -huh. Yeah, and they're beautiful grasses too. Like you just think that you don't even mow; you just let them grow, and they turn in these beautiful, beautiful yeah. things. You know, but we live in the desert, so I don't understand. Southern California is a desert; always has. We been. try well, you know. Our our predecessors tried to change that demographic, and it just didn't work. <laughs> well, it's just something about our mentality that we believe we have to have huge lawns. Also, we feel we can control nature. Um, yeah. We're only recently realizing that we we can't change a river's direction or where a river goes because it's inconvenient to us. It's going to move back. <laughs> I saw an article. There's now talk about creating a huge damming off a place somewhere in California to make a massive reservoir. I think they're removing the dam, right? No, there's talk about making a new one. Oh, okay. Well, to build a reservoir somewhere. I can't remember. I saw the article yesterday. I can't remember where it was. No, that's not helpful. But yeah, there's, so now we're actually talking about doing that. So that way they can store the water. And it's like, I can't remember how many acres, but it's it, out hundreds and hundreds of acres of water. And so that's the ne next talk is storing that and to create something like that. Will it affect anyone downstream? I, I mean, honestly, obviously, that's a stupid statement. Yes, it will affect people downstream, but if it's I agriculture. Can't, no, I think actually a lot of the agriculture people were for it. Okay. But okay. I don't want to speak out of turn because I can't recall. But well, I, I'll I'll do some homework this yeah. week and I'll try to find that article. And IKEA is going to start selling solar in California. 
I know. That's true. Yes, I'm as long sure. as you flat pack it and put it together, you're fine. My but, people. <laughs> but what they're teaming up, I think, is what they're teaming up with Sunrun. So they're actually going to start introducing it into the California Ikeas. I don't know if it's Southern California or all of California, but it's going to start coming in, which I, I don't know when that's going to be, but that headline was just out there yesterday, too. So that's kind of cool. There's a lot that's of good true. stuff happening. I mean, Ikea, hey, I'm going to give them props. They've done a lot lately. I mean, yes, they have. really step up the game. I mean, they buy back furniture now. They've been, or let me rephrase, they've introduced. Oh, they recycle and repurpose tons of stuff. I mean, they've been doing that for ages too. It's but now nothing. they will actually buy your used furniture back. They I, will, think, oh. I think they will actually buy it back. I mean, obviously not at what you paid for it, but yeah. You know, but I Maybe think you store credit to buy the new one. Possibly, which is huge. Yeah, I, mean, I would do it. I mean, because then if they can then repurpose it and it goes to another family who is in need of something who can't afford, I mean, I don't know what their whole system is, but they're actually being very forward thinking, which I love. I think that's fantastic. No, their sustainability department. Um, I sat in on a presentation they did about two years ago yeah. and it was, it was impressive there. I mean, they're most of Europe is leading the way. Ikea is leading the way we are playing catch up. Plastics. I think they're actually what? trying to I think they're actually trying to get rid of all plastic packaging and pieces and everything. I mean, that's huge. That's and huge. they're taking a lot of the waste plastic and turning it into new things yeah. for like kitchen cabinets and kitchen, um, you know, the doors. Yeah. They're repurposing a lot of things. So maybe they'll take some of the gas from the silos to make the energy that's going to be used to repurpose these items. See, this all came full that's circle true. right there. All that's, came what I love about you. that's what I love about you. On that, I'll let you go. Thank you for indulging me today on my little uh, sidestepping discussion on CO2. Um, that's right. I'm that. What? I went on a few tangents, so it's all good. Yeah, so do I. This is one of our tangent days where we just kind of chat, you know, free flow. So um, next week will be a little more structured, obviously, but we thank you. We will see you next time, guys, and have a great week. We'll talk to you later. Check the water restrictions. Check your water restrictions. That I That is just... Yes. That's a lot. Yes. Okay. Bye guys.